Think back to when you were a baby and took your very first steps. Did you stand up and confidently walk across the room on your very first try? <laughs> of course you didn't. You were a baby. <laughs> That's not what babies do. They stand up, and they fall down, and they get back up, and they do it over and over again. Sure, they cry, or they get frustrated. But if I had a guess, I don't think there's ever been a baby who has said, you know what, this walking thing, it's not for me. I give up, I'm a failure, and I'm not going to try anymore. Now, think back to the last time you didn't get something right. On the first, the second, or even the third try. What did you say to yourself? Did you say, you know what, that's OK. I needed to fail at that so I could do better the next time. Or did you say, oh, that's it. I give up. I'm a failure. I'm not going to try anymore. We all start out with a can-do attitude. So why does it change? I think it comes down to three simple words, fear of failing. You see, many of us set the bar impossibly high in our own lives. We strive for perfection. And anything short of that prompts us to say, that's it. I give up. I'm a failure. I'm not going to try anymore. When we think about this idea of striving for perfection and falling short, in no place is that more evident than when we look at the diet culture in our country. As a nation, we spend billions of dollars every year on the latest diet craze and promise. But obesity rates continue to climb. Why? I've worked with over 1,000 individuals struggling with their weight. And I can tell you how much they eat or how active they are. That's not the core issue. The common thread that ties all of these individuals together is how perfect they think they need to be in order to find success. The harder they are on themselves, the more they demand perfection, the more that holds them back. That desire to be perfect, that belief that anything short of perfection is failure, is the exact reason so many of us struggle to make change. I want to tell you a story. So about five years ago, I met Shelly. She was this really great woman. She was in her mid-40s, and she was struggling with obesity. And when she came into my office that first day, she looked so nervous. When I said to her, why have you come in? She looked at me and said, I'm scared. I was just diagnosed with diabetes. I know I need to lose weight. I've lost weight before, but I always gain it back. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. In speaking with her, it was clear that she had a history of making a lot of changes, but she just wasn't able to stick with them. So I said to her, you know what, let's try something new. How about you focus on making one change that's so small that you know without a doubt you can stick with it this week? So she thought about it for a minute and said, well, I could walk for 10 minutes every day. So that's where we started. A week later, she came back to my office, and she was beaming with confidence. She told me she had easily been walking 10 minutes every day. So with each passing week, she would set a small goal, achieve it, and then set another one. And her progress those first few months was remarkable. In the six months' time, she had cut her medication in half. By the year mark, she had lost 100 pounds, and she was off all of her medication completely. She told me, Erin, I've never been prouder of myself. Now, if I stop the story there, it sounds like Shelley solved her problem, right? Well, you see, there was one clue that showed us she wasn't going to be successful. In all the time that we worked together, she never had a slip-up. She never had one setback or even regained one pound. Who does that? It's remarkable, but it's not realistic. Just a couple days later, Shelly went to a party. And she decided she was going to have a slice of cake. No big deal, right? Not to Shelly. The moment that that cake touched her lips, she completely transformed. She went from a confident woman who wouldn't let anything stand in her way of her achieving her goals to somebody who became completely defeated. In that moment, she became a failure. And she could no longer see the point in continuing to try. 
Unfortunately, Shelley's story isn't uncommon. The research shows there's a direct link between perfectionism and disordered eating. It tells us that we have to address perfectionism if we hope to prevent and manage disordered eating, but that rarely happens. As healthcare professionals, we often get so wrapped up in the numbers that we forget to consider other factors like personality that can also impact health. So what do we do? We shame those who gain weight. We preach about calorie counting, portion control, getting more exercise, being more perfect. But what if we thought about it differently? What if instead of focusing so much on what we should do, we started to focus on how we should think? What if a simple shift in mindset to self-acceptance and self-compassion was really all that was needed to win the weight management battle? And what if those traits became the norm in our everyday life? Wouldn't we all be happier? I think we would. You know, as I'm sharing Shelley's story right now, I can see a bit of myself in her. I can relate with how she demanded perfection from herself. And I can understand how her view of success was either perfection or failure. There was no gray area allowed. But just like Shelley, I never viewed myself as a perfectionist. I was just always trying to be better at all things, in all ways. And I was always falling short. I still remember the first time I felt like a total failure. I was in kindergarten. And this, this right here was my nemesis. This cardboard shoe. This piece of cardboard with its little yarn laces almost derailed my entire educational career. Because you see, up until this day, I had only ever worn Velcro shoes. So on that day, when my teacher asked me to tie the laces on this cardboard shoe, I didn't know how to do it. It was the first time in my life that she asked me to do something that I didn't know how to do. And I failed. And I was mad. I was so mad, I went home that night and I told my parents, that's it, I am quitting kindergarten and I am never going back. Now, my mother did make me go back to school the next day. And I am happy to report that I did go on not only to graduate from kindergarten, but today, as an adult, I can tie my own shoes. <laughs> but you know, even though I went back to school that day, that desire to be perfect, it continued to follow me. Even as an adult, when I became a nutrition professional, I never wanted to admit to my clients that I struggled with disordered eating as a teenager, because what would they think? I was afraid they'd view me as a fraud, or a hypocrite, or worse. A failure. But what I've learned is that the struggles I had overcome, they weren't failures at all. They actually gave me unique insight and empathy to help others struggling in similar situations. They made me stronger, and they made me better. And that's the funny thing about failure. It can actually make us better. But sometimes we're just too close to it to see that. I never realized how much that desire to be perfect impacted my everyday life until I became a mother. I remember it was right after the birth of my second son, and I was struggling. Now, I was trying to juggle a newborn and a toddler, run a business, be a good wife, and everything in between. And I desperately wanted to look like I had it all together on the surface. But inside, I was falling apart. And I still remember one morning trying so hard just to get out the door on time. It took half the morning just to convince my toddler to wear a pair of pants. <laughs> and it took at least another hour to change the baby over and over again after a few poorly timed diaper explosions. And everybody was crying. <laughs> and I remember crying to myself and sitting down on the floor saying, I give up. I can't do this. I can't be perfect. And all of a sudden, this little voice piped up next to me and said, but mommy, you are perfect. And I still remember looking up at that little face thinking, you know what? He's right. Despite all of my many, many imperfections, in that moment, I was everything he needed. I was perfect. It took the wisdom of a three-year-old to point out to me how ridiculous my ideals were <laughs> and to show me what truly mattered. But I knew in that moment, I had to change. Because who wants their children growing up striving for the unrealistic and unattainable goal of perfection? I knew I didn't. But until I changed, how could I raise resilient children? So how 
do you overcome perfectionism? In my opinion, it starts with a change in mindset. You have to embrace failure, learn from it, and let those failures help you to grow. You see, that was the exact mindset shift that Shelley needed to make. A year and a half after her inner struggle with perfectionism, she had a breakthrough. She gave herself permission to fail. And instead of shaming herself over those failures, she embraced them and learned from them. And today, she's in a much better place. She's balancing her diet with foods that nourish her, along with indulgences. She walks every day because she enjoys it and it makes her feel good. And she's down 80 pounds and counting. But she knows the number on the scale doesn't define her. And her self-worth is no longer wrapped up in how much she weighs. She's practicing self-compassion every day. And ultimately, that practice has been the key to her weight loss success. So whatever your goals are for yourself, if you want to achieve them, begin by practicing self-compassion. Embrace slip-ups, learn from them, and let those failures help you to achieve your best self. As I leave you today, I just want you to think about one thing. If you demanded perfection from yourself from the moment you were born, you'd still be walking around in your diapers today. <laughs> the fact that you're not, you're wearing pants, <laughs> that gives me hope. Because you didn't get here because you gave up. You got here because you have the will to try and to fail and to try again. So how much more could you achieve if you embrace failure with open arms and learn from it? Because ultimately, in the end, it's failure that helps us to achieve our goals. Failure is what creates muscle. So don't be afraid to flex that muscle every day. Thank you.